Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, uh, verses 53 to 58, where it is written, And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there, and coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And as brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and not all of his sisters with us, where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his, in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Jesus goes out, and he preaches sermons, and boy, he gets people's attention. He does miracles, and people are astounded. And he goes to his hometown and preaches. It says they were astonished. But astonished, that's neutral. It doesn't really get into is that positive or negative. But we see it's negative. They're asking. You're the hometown boy. We know your mom and dad. We know your family. How did you get this? And when did you get the ability to do all this? And they took offense at him like, excuse me, you're the hometown boy and you dare to lecture us? I remember you when you're just this little kid walking around and you're going to tell me my business? Get out of town. Well, and our Lord says, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and his own household. For we all live uh, everyday lives. We live everyday lives today. Jesus and people in this day, they had everyday lives. And in that everyday life, things get familiar. I mean, we don't get super emotional about that, uh, our daily rituals and routines. But we do not emotion like we'd cry when they're broken. But we do get some level of attachment. If something happens to throw you off, you're like, that's weird. It's unusual. And that's what's happening here. Everyone knew Jesus of Nazareth as the hometown kid, just another guy. And when he comes to the synagogue to preach, they're like, this is weird. This is strange. Stop messing with us. For that is, best that is the best description I can give you of Jesus' ministry, both in his time on the earth and continuing on through his church and through his sacraments and his word. Jesus messes with us. He throws, the, he throws things off. Routine is broken, and we get sometimes a little off-put by that. Sometimes we get upset. Because we think our life is completely figured out. Nothing to worry about. We've got this. We've got a great routine. Good for us. And Jesus disrupts it. And we're like, hey, I didn't ask for your opinion. Jesus, go back to the church. Go back to my devotional time. Don't crowd into my everyday life. That's the same response the people in his hometown synagogue had. Why well, should be a surprise? That is human nature, to always pull away from what Christ offers. Because many times it's not comfortable. It can be upsetting. It can be challenging. And that's the point. Jesus is our Savior. No doubt about it. On the cross and at the empty tomb, our sins are forgiven. The way of salvation is open. He's our Lord and He's our Savior. Let me rephrase that. He is our Savior. But He's also our Lord. A Lord you obey even if you don't necessarily enjoy obeying. And that's what makes it so challenging. Jesus isn't just our Savior. He isn't just our buddy. He's our Lord. He commands us to do things that aren't necessarily comfortable. And like the people in the synagogue, sometimes we can go, nope, nope, I'm not going to do it. Stop messing with me. And the problem being, if you do that, to reject Jesus as Lord, well, you just rejected him. 
That's to reject him as savior, too. Are you serious? Yeah. Salvation is by uh, works? No. Salvation is by faith. The Bible's full of examples. But faith isn't dead. Faith isn't just an idea. Faith, pistis in the Greek, is an allegiance. An allegiance to who Jesus Christ is. An allegiance to what he has done that reflects in our lives. That saving faith, it's not just knowing something. So yes, Jesus can mess with us. But ultimately, his messing with us is a good thing. It means that, yes, he is our Lord, he is our Savior, and we are his. So don't flee from discomfort. Don't flee from Jesus messing with you. Embrace it as the next step on your faith journey and allow him to mess with you. Let us close with prayer. Lord, I thank you for what you've given us. And Lord, we thank you that you care enough to confront us, you, that you care enough to mess with us. May we not cringe, may we not pout, O oh Lord, but may we follow you on your path. Thank you, God, for what you've done for us. Amen.